Hello everyone, welcome to um, the Light Bites webinar uh, today. Um, we're going to be looking at artwork lighting um, and how you can successfully light it um, to highlight it in, in the best way possible. Um, I'm Luke Thomas, Design Director at John Cullen and joined by Rebecca Crawford, uh, Design Director in the Middle East. Uh, so we're very Hello. excited <laughs> to have you uh, joining us today for a, uh, another exciting topic. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, I think with artwork lighting, I think it's particularly for us, it's a very important topic to discuss. And as anyone that's worked with us before knows that we're quite passionate about making sure that artwork is considered in a space just as much as the architectural elements and the interior furnishings. Um, and the reason for this is because obviously the way in which we approach lighting generally is, is to obviously avoid our grids of downlight that we've talked about in our previous webinars and very much focusing on these focal points that we can create within a space. Um, and one of the really uh, tricky things to consider is, is perhaps where artwork might be going at the start of a project. Um, generally speaking for us, obviously, just because it's quite an easy approach for us, we often can sort of isolate where the artwork could be located. Um, so when it comes to, uh, sorry, the quality of the light, it's incredibly important that we uh, consider a very high quality CRI. And this is because obviously you want to ensure that the colors on the artwork themselves are visible back to your eye. Um, if you are to use a low quality LED, you're not necessarily going to get the best effect for the light. Um, now, all of that said, there are multiple different things you also need to consider when it comes to using downlights. Um, with this image here, if we start off very, very simply, it's able to use just a pinpoint of light to really make that whole piece of art um, really, really show up beautifully. And the lovely thing is, is that the texture is considered. So obviously this is created by positioning the downlight in a way that we know that that piece of art is there. If we move on to the next image, I think it's important to consider also if it's a multiple select or multiple pieces of art together in one space. Here we've used two down lights and have added in a lens to ensure that you get a soft wash for the entire collection of artwork. If this was a single uh, point, then you would only light half of it. And if you were to use multiple points of light, to light the artwork without a lens, you would end up getting rather quite harsh spots of light onto the wall. And as a result, that can often detract against the way that we're trying to have to um, highlight the artwork in itself. Um, have we still got issues with the sound? I just wanted to check. Oh gosh. I can hear you fine on my end. Um... I think we're okay. I think the all good. We might have Tina's maybe experiencing some issues on her end. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's just so, checking. Yeah, you can all hear me. Sorry. Okay. Brilliant. Um, so yes, the use of lenses is is an incredibly important tool that we have to consider. Now, when I talk about lenses, I'm talking about um, adding in a sandblasted glass lens in front of the beam of light, so that you get that beautifully soft light onto the wall. Um, I think it's also important to consider as we start off with these downlights, you cannot just position downlights anywhere that you want. If you've got a wall that you know that you're putting artwork, you have to consider the exact positioning of the downlights based on the height of the wall, based on the amount of art that you might be positioning onto the space but also how exactly that light itself is angled towards the wall. If we have too harsh an angle from the ceiling to the artwork itself, you will get a very tight beam of light that will actually end up causing glare in your eye. This is particularly tricky when you're dealing with framed artwork that has a perspex front. And that glare is something that we don't want to experience when we are looking at lighting artwork. We also need to consider that if the light itself is too close to the wall, based on the height of the, of the ceiling, the light itself will skim at a very narrow angle and then actually land too much on the floor. And as a result, the focal point will also be reduced from the wall to the floor. Um, and that light spillage is certainly something that we don't want to look at. Um, so 
it's all very, very um, detailed in the position of the downlight itself. Mm. Um, so it's not just about the choice of it, adding in lenses, it's, it's how exactly you position it. Um, and there is no rule of thumb for positioning a, uh, a downlight in a, in a certain area for you know a size of the artwork you have to explore all of the parameters so if we look at the next image you can see that we've got the downlight positioned in a way that it just lights the piece of art i think the, the image on the right hand side that you can see it's just focusing on that artwork and that is because the downlight is spaced out from the wall in a, in a correct accordance with the angle of, of the tilt versus the the space of the the artwork itself and likewise with the image on the left, you can also see how the focus is on the art itself. It's a little bit more intense because you do have that darker canvas to contend with. But what's incredibly important is the fact that you also consider the size of the beam versus the artwork. Um, again, if you were to have a much uh, wider piece of art, you would want to consider multiple sources of light like we saw previously. Um, or again, if it's a smaller piece of art to consider a narrower beam of light. Um, if we continue onwards, it's also, it's very easy to talk about downlights being positioned in a way that you can pre-plan. Of course, it's going to take time to plan where your artwork is going. So it must be considered just mm -hmm. as important as the rest of the architectural elements. Here we knew with this piece, although the piece of art in itself in its entirety is, is the size that you can see with the white background. We knew that the 3D uh, element of this was going to be positioned in this space. So we made the choice to light the 3D element with some cross lighting to really try and pick up the, the movement that you get from that piece. And this mm -hmm. in itself is obviously and making sure that you also consider the spacing of the art, or sorry, the spacing of the downlights in the ceiling. Um, what was quite an interesting dis sort of discussion point quite often when it comes to artwork lighting is when it's retrofit. Um, we, we have a number of projects where the lighting in place is in either the incorrect position for the artwork or it's the incorrect source of light or beam width uh, for, for the artwork itself. Um, this was an ex interesting project where the lights previously that you can see lighting the three pieces of art in the center, the three red pieces. Um, the light itself was actually positioned previously in the underside of the stone alcove that you can see there. So if we look on the image on the right, you can see very, very slightly, because it's still in work in progress, uh, you can see where the downlights were actually removed uh, from this point. And we took them out of here because what was happening was because the downlight was positioned so close to the wall, it was barely touching the artwork itself. It was actually skimming down onto the floor and the focus was entirely removed from the artwork itself. Um, so it was incredibly important that we looked at the space. We brought the downlights further out to aim towards the artwork themselves so that they lit the art perfectly. And this is something that we see a lot uh, within our projects, particularly the retrofit uh, and the upgrading projects that we work on. And that is that we can have entire rooms that are dedicated to artwork and the art is hung in a way that it is the, it is the main feature in the space. But the downlights are very often positioned so close to the walls that they have absolutely no um, strength in lighting, in lighting the art because of the angles that we're working with. So it's very, very important that we always consider the angle here. And as I said before, if it's too narrow, you're always going to skim down onto the floor. And if it's too wide, then the viewer will actually end up getting the glare back into their eye. So one of the things we work with, with our fixtures in particular, is using downlights that can tilt to 30 or 35 degrees so that we get that perfect angle onto the artwork. Um, and this worked out beautifully in, this, in the end for this project because mm. it, it totally transformed the space. Um, and what was quite nice, we've got a, a wider oh, beam onto sorry. the artwork. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a <laughs> wider beam onto the artwork and a narrower beam onto the, onto the sculptures on the side. And sculptures is certainly something that we'll come into in a bit later, but it's just nice to see we've got these different effects for the different uh, elements in this space. 